Okay, the infrastructure part then. Uh, so all this thing is based on, on sort of agreements, as, as you can tell, that if you want to have data that's interoperable from different organizations, you have to agree on some ways of representing the data. And the, and the idea of the semantic web is actually, actually to have this kind of uh, technology cake, as they call it. So you have here on the top, bottom line, you have the URI representing, representing uh, an ERI uh, representing the identification system that we have on the web. So the idea is that everything has, has a kind of identifier that's basically a web address there. Then you have the RDF data interchange format, which, which is the sort of basis of the semantic web. The network structure data model is defined by this RDF. Then on top of this kind of network, uh, simple network model, you have then, then uh, the ontologies, ontology language AU and RDF schema. Uh, and uh, using these uh, ways, you can, you can create basically this, the hierarchical structures like places and uh, concepts as that I saw, showed you in previous slides. Then we have the rule side, RIF, which is, which is an, an format for, for representing logical rules, and using these rules you can then do reasoning based on the data. And the most interesting and, and useful part of this stack is the Sparkle endpoint kind of thing that, that I showed you. So the query language of the semantic web with Sparkle, and, and the idea is that this simple query language is then used for querying network structure data. And it's, it's sort of very central when you're using this technologies in practice. And then on top of all this you have then, then the idea of using logic, you have proofs. Uh, so everything is basically based on logic and, and actually this, this originates very much from the, from the artificial intelligence research where logic was some kind of starting point. So the semantics in semantic web is based on, on predicate logic or actually uh, simplified forms of, of predicate logic and uh, that's sort of the basis from, from mathematical view. And then on top, on top of everything you have the layer of trust because it's, uh, it's something you know, in a different dimension, whether you can trust something or not. It's not necessarily related, uh, related to, to whether it's, it's uh, logically proven. And uh, on, in addition to this, there's, there's another important set of uh, practices on the semantic web uh, and this is how you publish your data on the web. There's a procedure how to make it, and it's often referred to as the five-star model by Tim Berners-Lee, and this is, refers to the way how you publish your data, and, and you get these stars depending on how linked data you are, you are really, really creating. You get one star if you publish your data in whatever format on the web, two stars if it's in structured form like Excel, uh, three stars if it's in, in some, some open format like CSV, not only on the Microsoft's format. And then the hard part starts here. If you're using the URIs for, for, for identifying things, then you get the fourth star. And then the most difficult thing is, is to get the five stars, when, when, which means that you're not only using these identifiers for interlinking the data inside itself, but you're also creating links from your own data to the other guys' data sets. So the idea here is to encourage people, people to uh, be as linked as possible. So in, in, in the case that I showed you, uh, for example, uh, uh, there are two basic problems involved. It looked easy perhaps, but it was not that easy to make these kind of systems. So the first thing, thing that you have here these uh, nodes like Titalia. How do you know that this Titalia that, that's part of this blue network is the same Titalia concept that's used in this, this uh, Villa network here. So all these nodes are shared by different data sets. How can we know that these, these things are the same? It's not trivial. Here it's, it's fairly easy because it's a small network, but for example if here's Amsterdam, then how do you know that, uh, one, what Amsterdam do you mean? So you have to have to solve the problem of value, data value alignment, and uh, and the, the medicine there is is to have a shared ontology. So people using 
and annotating their data, describing their data in their own databases, if they use the same identifiers for, for, for same things, then everything clicks easily each other. But if not, then you have to do lots of manual work when, when you create a network of, of different uh, data sources. So that's, that's re it's a really bad problem and it's, it's sort of, uh, lots of work needed there and the technologies are available that, that, that can ease the pain, but that's a difficult thing, believe me. And then the other problem is that what kind of structure do you have the data? So the metadata structure that you're using there, what kind of properties, the arcs that connect between different nodes, what kind of system are you using them there? And different people and systems use again here different ways. There are two main approaches that you can approach this problem of data, metadata model alignment. You can use Dublin Core kind of approach where, where you basically align the different properties to each other using the sub-property arc. So this is well-known technique created by Dublin Core community. And then the other one is that you might have, have a, a, a foundational ontological representation of everything. And, and then when you get new data, you transform the data to this kind of ontology. And this CDOC theorem is, is, is something that the museum community in the world has, has uh, developed into an, an ISO standard. So that if you're using this standard, then, then things are okay with you if, you, if somebody else is also using the same system. Or if, if there are mappings from your data model to this side of the CRM approach model. So you can, you can think of this like, like an infrastructure, like, like I've here shown old, older infrastructures in Finland, like railways and fight, fights, or streets, or roads. But in, on the semantic web we are doing a kind of, of information infrastructure, where the information can flow in a similar kind of network, fluently from one, one place to another. And this is what we have been up to for over a decade now, the, creating the Finnish national ontology infrastructure. First we had a 10 years project on in the Finland on the project and, and, and then the Link Data Finland project that continues from that on. So the idea here is as our friend Al put it, intellectual solve problems, geniuses prevent them. And that's that's very true in, in, in this setting, if not only in, in physics. So, so if we could solve the, the linking problem, for example, already when the data is described, then, then we would be, it would be much easier, <laughs> easier to live after and, and create these kind of uh, uh, solutions where data is integrated from different places. So what, what is needed then, if you would like to have this kind of info? We need shared ontologies, these kind of hierarchies, we need the schemas, schemas the structure, the, how we structure the knowledge, and then we, of course, want to also share the data. That if I, if I have, a, for example, the culture sample data or the library data, the book sample data, somebody can take it and reuse it. That's, of course, a very important way of, of uh, um, being interoperable and using, reusing the data. But it's not enough to have this kind of mathematical or data-driven data um, standards or ways of doing things, but we also need help web services that help the life, and uh, that's where I was referring to in this answer during the break. Uh, we need shared ontology services, and we, need, we mean shared uh, link data services. And uh, for the ontology services, we created this onki.fi that you can go and have a look. And it's now, now, now maintained and uh, developed further by the National Library uh, under the name Pinto.fi, where we have a general concepts, tens of thousands of general concepts uh, of open data that you can use in your applications. And then we are now working on, on, on more difficult things further, like, like the historical uh, place name service HIPLA.fi, where we have historical places and maps. And we, we are also working actually on, on historical persons and, uh, and so on. So this historical stuff are much more difficult because, because then you have to not only take care of the modern times but also the, what happened before and, and it's getting faster and faster the further deep you, you dive into history. And then, then we have this uh, link data service uh, LDF, Link Data Finland FI that publishes metadata 
schemas and, and lots of data sets in an open way. So I'll go quickly through the ontologies, what we need there. We, have, we need general concepts like pool, like table book and, and so on. Then we need actor ontologies, persons, companies and so on, places like Helsinki, time ontologies, what kind of time periods there have been, and event ontologies, and these are actually the central thing here. You know? So what happens, it turns out that that's the most important thing, thing from, from the ontological viewpoint, what happens, because these happenings or events, they, they interlink all other things. Events are related to time, place, and some actors that, that participate in the events and the events can be described using general concepts. Then we also have lots of uh, domain nomenclatures like in medicine or, or whatever. Uh, so lots of work to be done there. I go very quickly through this. So, so the thing that we created for, for the Finnish Thesauri was is called Coco Ontology that's now available in, in, in Onki and Finto. So it's based on, on a large ontology and then interlinked more, uh, more uh, detailed ontologies. For example, Mao is an ontology for museum domain, this is for photography, this is for agriculture and forestry, and the idea is that we have this kind of ontology cloud. Interlinked ontologies based on thesaurus that's already used by, by different uh, organizations in Finland. And from the end user's viewpoint it looks like this. And the, this just to, just to show that there's lots of tens of thousands of concepts in this system from 15 different, uh, different uh, uh, partial ontologies, uh, sub-ontologies. Then we have actors. I already showed this Piotr uh, Tchaikovsky problem, so, so this kind of ontologies are needed. And it's also very difficult because people, people have many names and, and they change names. Women get married and it's, it's a mess. Here's a system that we created for that. And yes, we are using also biography. So this is semantic national biography. You can go later if you look like and look at there. But it, it's harvested from, from 6,300 biographies. So it has over 100,000 different events that describe what happened to these people. And the idea there is that, that the life of, of like Karl Knutinburg Bunde is, is defined in terms of the events that happened to him. And you can see them on timeline and also map. So that's kind of a spatial temporal representation of, of uh, people. And then it's interlinked to all kinds of, uh, can be interlinked to all kinds of, of uh, other data sets, for example, collections that are related to these artists or so on. Place ontologies. Here, here you can uh, go to uh, have a look. Uh, again, I don't have time in details, but you go to have a look at Hipla. For example, here's a part of, of Finland where you can see that it's very rich on, on, on different locations and uh, it's open data, you can get everything you like in RDF format from there and you can have maps there as well. So this is a historical map of, 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 of Karelia actually here. So there's a, you can have the maps and then you have the places on top of each other and then you can search for here and uh, you can add your own, own places in there. So this is something that we're now working on. Time ontologies, that's also interesting. Different bronze age in Finland was different, for example, than, than in, in Mediterranean. How to represent these kind of things? Modern uncertainty, of course, there. And event ontologies, these are the key, I would say, and we are focusing our work very much on event ontologies. So, for example, here is a, a picture from, from Malta uh, conference, and if you look at the metadata in this case, for example, no, nothing is said about that this is related to Second World War because the events are not there in the collections, but everybody can only understand this image by connecting it to the events of the Second World War. We have created also the Finnish history ontology, that's open data that you can find in LinkedIn Finland, based on the, the history, history researchers timeline in Agricola service. And, and it's even possible we have experimented with representing, uh, representing uh, skills cultural heritage skills using these ontology technologies and you can view, for example, in the culture center how, how these things are I mean, going on. So I use this to, to store intangible heritage in terms of these new technologies. 
And then there are these uh, nomenclatures that, that disease is drugs and, and huge collections of, of different kind of, of objects or, or phenomena, trademarks and so on. So that it's, the world is full of ontologies. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line. And then, in order to get all these ontologies on your, your use, uh, we have been working on these ontology services where the idea is to provide them on, on uh, alive, alive services like onki.fi. I put only the references here, it's not possible to go in details. But the important thing is now that, that, that the National Library is now hosting our service and, and developing it further, so there's, they are on a stable. Yeah. Here still I just give you links to have uh, applications then on, on the Link Data Finland site. This is now the main, main uh, sort of service that we're developing. You can have their datasets and uh, all kinds of documentation and services. And if you want your own data published, you can contact us. We can publish it as Link Data there. The idea is to share open data. And then on top of that, uh, create uh, um, Application. So this is the biggest system that we are now working on. It's called Sota Sampo, War Sampo, Finnish Second World War on, on semantic web where we have uh, over five million uh, links between nodes in the in the graph, like 160,000 photographs, authentic photographs taken in the frontiers. We have 100,000 person there. Every everybody get, that got killed in the war of action. Is, is in our database as linked data and interlinked with, ever, with different uh, events. So we have an event line of different happenings of, of uh, Little War, Continuation War and Lapis War. We have persons view here, we have, we have uh, uh, troops here, we have places, the lost Karelia places, maps, Kansataisten Lehret or magazines, something like, like uh, Thousands, thousands of articles written by the soldiers after the war uh, has been interlinked with, with this old data so that you can, you can link them, the texts as well, with, with these contents. And then we have the, the, the casualties database of the dead from, from the National Archives. Here, here's actually a list of, of uh, what kind of data there is. If you have any, anybody, your relatives killed, in the second war, please go there and, and have a look how he, what he did in the war, because we can actually reconstruct even the, even the history of individual soldiers. We know what troop he was involved, and, and then we have some events related to the troop, and then we can put it on the map. So you can, for example, here see the timeline of different events that took place in winter war and how they are related, and, and here's a heat map of how killed, people were killed during this time. So you can see how the, how the killings evolved in the war. So this we also call this uh, linked death application. It's a very sad story. And, and, but the idea here is that uh, basically that, that uh, Hegel has said that uh, we learn from history that we learn nothing from history and uh, we try to prove that hopefully he, he was wrong regarding the Second World War. I think that the more we make, make the data about the war available, the less probably there will be war, because then people more understand the war. But the question then is, is what have we learned now that we have been working quite along with this uh, semantic technologies? And, and in summary of my talk, lessons learned. What's the most important thing that I think we have learned here? So I think that everybody should open his data, her data, so that it links with the other's data. Because then everybody's data gets enriched for free, in, in a sense. Redundant work is minimized by collaboration, because if I know that you are making this part of the knowledge and I'm making this part of the knowledge, I don't have to care. I can link. So that's, that's a very, very effective also from, from the collaboration viewpoint. Now that we know that this system can work, then the work can be shared in better ways. And then the data can be reused in different applications. So when once it's in, in, a, in a sort of a sustainable format and semantically well represented, you don't have to touch the data. It's very easy to make these applications. You hire a couple of nerds for a couple of months and you have a nice, nice application like, like, like Warsamo. But if you have to touch the data, if you have millions of, of data items there and it's somehow wrong, 
wrongly annotated or described. That's that's costs. That costs a lot. And then use shared infrastructure to prevent data linking problems. I think that in the future of the web we have to take into account more what the other people are doing. And, and by, by taking into account each other uh, and not just doing whatever we like ourselves, although if this is possible in, in the web, we can, we can really, really get this sort of collaboration and collaboration platform for, for establishing the semantic web in the large. Here I have links also to all kinds of publications that we have created and, and demonstrations, if you like, on, on our website. Thank you.